are currently standing out in front of the Toronto Metro Convention Centre. Uh, this is the location for the up and coming G20 Summit, which is coming to Toronto on June 26th and 27th. Now this area that we are standing in right now is being referred to as the Red Zone. Uh, there's reports that there will be upwards of 10,000 police in this area. Uh, RCMP is going to be in charge of this area. And um, there's upwards of 4,000 businesses and uh, residents who are going to have to uh, register their names, their, give over their identification and get a special photo ID pass in order to get into their own homes. I'm George Tucker. I'm from the Toronto Police Service and have been a police officer downtown here in 52 Division mostly for approximately 30 years. Obviously with these people coming to town, this is a huge international event. It puts Toronto on the global stage. And with these um, international people that are coming here, we obviously have to take the steps that we deem necessary to provide that protection for them to visit Canada during this summit. How will that be accomplished? The Integrated Security Unit has security zones and they will be protected by fences. You know, the world did change enforcing a 911 and if it wasn't for some of the elements in our society, the security units would not have to be here in the presence that they are going to be here at. I'm concerned about the protest zone. If, let's say, the police get a little overzealous and, and there's tear gas uh, used on protesters, I, I worry that that will antagonize residents. Here we are in front of Trinity Bell Woods Park. Uh, now this is the location that they have designated for the free speech zone uh, where they say that all the protesters can gather. I do know that because of the town hall meeting we were at the other night, there was a lot of local uh, residents in this area who are not happy about the fact that they're going to be bringing thousands and thousands of protesters into this very beautiful park. Now, the proximity of where this is located in relation to the Toronto Metro Convention Centre where the actual world leaders are going to be meeting, this is nowhere near close to the actual summit. So here in Canada, uh, protesters actually have the right to be seen and to be heard. Um, that's the whole point of protesting. That's why you make signs and that's why you chant loud things because the, you want the leaders to hear your message. To get around that issue, they said they are going to be setting up a live feed camera within the park and they will be broadcasting the protesters' message into the meeting room for the G20 summit. So now we are currently down in Toronto's financial district. This is the heart of the financial district here in the city. This uh, location that we are at here is literally just two blocks down the street from where we were earlier at the Toronto Metro Convention Center where the G20 Summit is going to be meeting. So we thought it was important to come here and do a little reporting to show you what you can expect uh, in two months from now in this area. As many uh, of you know, there is a group out there called the Black Bloc, which uh, usually consists of about anywhere from 30 to 40 people who show up to these protests dressed in black they often have rocks and they'll pick up things and try to smash banks. Uh, and, you know, what this does is it discredits uh, the thousands and thousands of legitimate protesters who are going to be protesting here with a very, very legitimate cause. Just last week, we were down at this location and we managed to get uh, footage of a terrorism civilian evacuation drill that they were running here in Commerce Court. Now that's when we found out about the TAPS organization, which is the Toronto Association of Police and Private Security. And um, you know, here we are a week later coming down to do our pre-G20 uh, report when the private security uh, approached one of our cameramen and PFT reporters, Brian Law. Can you get a permit to be filming our building? No. Nope. I'm going to need to see the permit or you're going to have to move that footage. On public property, we don't need a permit. To film private property, you do, sir. Well, we don't have one, and I know I don't need it to most film stuff. I'm getting the shots at the top of the Okay, and I'm calling you, sir, to film our buildings. You can need a permit. Okay, so my dear from Company ID, please. No, you may not. No, I may not? No. Okay. And may I ID on you? I do have ID on me. Can you uh, give it to me? Uh, why do you want to see my ID? Because there's a heightened security because of the G20 coming up. I'm aware. I'm, I'm going to go through the accreditation process and everything. I'm, all I'm doing down here today is just getting shots on the streets, bank logos, stuff like that, to show the proximity of where the G20 is in relation to the financial district. That's it. Okay, so. and I'd appreciate if you identified yourself. Well, that's fine. I can identify myself to you. My name is Brian. But, uh, okay. you know, I don't, I don't think it's necessary to give ID to private security when I'm filming on public property. So, 
Sure, they're just they're helping us out because we've been told yep. them to be aware of. Uh, oh yeah, no, I, I'm aware. Yeah, we we saw the the uh, private security drill last week. So. What's your last name? L A W. That's right. I'm not going to surrender that. Sorry, but uh, I can give you my name, but you know I'm not comfortable with surrendering anyone. Your address? Uh, no. Sorry. Phone number? No, not my phone number. I'll give you my name, sir. Where do you work for? I work independently. Where are you filming? I'm just filming some shots, so we're getting uh, we're going to be cutting together a pre-G20 video, just kind of showing the proximity of the downtown core in relation to where the G20. Do you work for? I work independently. You already? Uh, I do. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to surrender my ID. What's that? I said I don't feel comfortable surrendering my ID. Okay, well, this is a very sensitive situation. I, I understand And that. we don't want people filming buildings in downtown core, especially for preceding the uh, G20. Okay. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, no, I understand that. I'm just going to, you know, go about my own business and just get some shots. You're going to stop filming, right? I'm sorry? You're going to stop filming now? Uh, well, yeah. I'll stop filming as soon as we're done getting all the shots. You're going to stop filming now, right? Or you're going to give us ID one of the uh, no, I can't. I can't do that. Okay. Alright, well, turn around, put your hands on your back. Okay. We're going to do it that way. I don't understand why I'm going to you. Okay. So right now on the camera, as it's still rolling, um, we are being arrested for, uh, PC James, actually. If you'd like to know. Yeah. They'll be on your record of arrest. Okay. We're just down here in the financial district. We were just put uh, under uh, temporary arrest by the police. Uh, they wanted to find out what our names were. We refused to give them our identification. So they put us in handcuffs, turned the camera off, took our wallets out, searched our bags, reported us in, wrote down a police report. And, uh, yeah, we got one of the badge numbers on camera, or read it out on camera, before he decided to turn our camera off. So, um, this is the type of stuff that we can expect to see before the G20, leading up to the world leaders coming down to the city. This is truly going to be Police State Canada. So, this is Brian Law reporting for Press for Truth. Uh, just let out of handcuffs. I'm a free man again, and I'm going to stay free. Um, now this goes to show how serious they are about security when it comes to G20 issues, especially in this downtown financial district. Hi, uh, it's been reported that up to a thousand private security officers are also going to be partaking in this uh, security at the G20. Um, so my question is, is um, do these private security, will they have the same powers that police have? And then also, uh, how do we hold uh, private security members accountable, say, an abuse of power situation arises? I can't really disclose um, police strength and other people that are being utilized, but I can tell you this. Police officers, again, like internationally protected people, are a very crystal clear designation in law in this country, and only they have the special powers and authority to do things, and private security don't have those powers. And if they are utilized, they have been used at the Olympics and that, they'll be in very uh, different roles than the actual police roles, and they'll be, they'll be held accountable. Can you discuss um, kind of what level the private security will be used? Is it just more? Unfortunately, no, I can't. I see. No, no, no. Put the rock down, man. Put the rock down. Put the rock down. This is all mine. Hey, 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 hey. These three guys are cops, everybody. In 2007, um, there was a summit that was held in Montebello, Quebec, uh, where three Sûreté de Quebec police officers uh, were caught as agent provocateurs. Um, they were dressed as aggressive uh, protesters uh, with rocks in their hands in an attempt to incite violence. Um, George, as a representative of the Toronto Police, can you assure us that the Toronto Police Force uh, will not engage in any um, police uh, agent, uh, provocateur agent activities at the G20 Summit? What I can tell you is that the Community Relations Group is strictly there on its face to build those bridges and trust. We've reached out to protest groups and we're continuing to do so. There's two halves to the community relations group. I'm the one that reaches out to business in that. There's another half that reaches out to protest, demonstration, and rally groups. I'm trying to tell them, uh, not tell them, but advise them of what the laws are and et cetera, asking for their assistance and compliance with those. Um, other matters, security matters, I'm not at liberty to, those, to discuss those in an open format.
So here we are currently standing right out front of the Toronto Film Studio. Uh, this is the building that has been designated as a temporary holding facility uh, for any arrests that may be made during the G20 summit. We are going to be bringing you extensive coverage of the G20. Uh, we will have more pre-reports uh, leading up to it. We will be covering it from every angle. Uh, we will have some of our reporters at all the locations that we've shown you today to make sure that we cover every angle and we show the world what's really happening because uh, as we all know we can't trust mainstream media.